Today in this lecture we are going to talk about decompensated heart failure or the inability of the heart to regain sufficient functions after cardiac failure. Now compensated heart failure means the ability to regain the ability to regain function after cardiac failure and decompensated heart failure means the inability or the heart is unable to regain its function after the heart failure now to discuss and understand the cardi uh, decompensated heart failure we must quickly revise compensated heart failure acute and chronic effects of heart failure which we have discussed in detail in our last two three lectures now to understand quickly cardiac failure is the inability of the heart to pump enough blood to satisfy the needs of the human body normally the the cardiac output the amount of the blood that the heart pumps every minute is 5 liters per minute with these two graphs we are going to discuss the compensated and decompensated heart failure and we have discussed in our previous lectures as well that on this graph on the y axis we have mentioned the cardiac output and cardiac output of the normal heart is 5 liters per minute so these two graphs will basically uh, represent the compensated and here the uncom or the decompensated heart failure and both the graphs have their cardiac output the cardiac output on the uh, y axis which is 5 liters per minute in the normal heart basically there are a lot of causes for the cardiac failure but the most important cause is the ischemic heart failure when some of the blood vessels that are supplying blood to the muscles of the heart they get blocked or the blood flow to the muscles of the heart it is decreased and most of the ischemic heart disease is due to the atherosclerosis or due to obstruction in the coronary vessels which basically supply blood to the heart muscles something which we have discussed again and again and again in our previous lectures now whenever the cardiac failure occurs there are some acute effects and then some chronic effects the acute effect is basically sudden decrease in the uh, cardiac output suppose for example this is a normal heart which has been represented here with the red color graph on this uh, diagram we have presented the cardiac output on the y axis and the right atrial pressure on the x axis now here we have the heart The pressure at this point this is the right atrium this is the left atrium there is the right ventricle here we have the left ventricle the pressure at the right atrium this is the pressure in the right atrium and this pressure in the right atrium normally is 0 millimeter of mercury the cardiac output normally is 5 liters uh, per minute so in a normal heart cardiac output is 5 liters per minute in the normal circumstances and the right atrial pressure pressure in the heart right atrium is 0 millimeter of mercury what happens when the heart muscles are acutely damaged for example a part of the heart muscle has been damaged due to obstruction of the coronary vessel although cardiac failure can occur due to a lot of reasons but we are simply focusing on the ischemic heart disease now the heart will uh, functioning will decrease because this portion is unable to pump properly so the cardiac output will quickly decrease and this has been denoted with the black color graph which represents the acute damage so after the acute damage the cardiac output has decreased what happens after the acute effects is that there is compensation by the sympathetic nervous system and it is important to understand that the heart failure basically compensated heart failure occur in moderate heart failure when there is moderate damage or small damage then the compensated heart failure will occur and the decompensated heart failure will occur when their damage is large when the damage is large now here the damage has occurred the moderate damage has occurred and the cardiac output has decreased and the right atrial pressure has increased from zero to this point it has increased to this point so cardiac output has fallen from this point to this point and right atrial pressure has increased from this point to 0 to 3 or 4 this is basically acute damage but soon after acute damage sympathetic nervous system will get activated and it will cause compensation 
The sympathetic nervous system will activate the heart and it will activate the peripheral blood vessels and the heart will uh, contract it is at an increased rate the heart rate will increase the force of contraction of the heart will increase and the the pressure with which the blood is coming back to the heart the pressure with which the blood is coming back to the heart will increase the filling pressure will increase so these things will occur, occur with the help of the sympathetic system activation and it will occur within few seconds so the cardiac output will slightly increase but the right atrial pressure will also slightly increase so here we see the cardiac output was here normal the right atrial pressure was also normal due to sudden acute damage the cardiac output has decreased and the right atrial pressure has increased at this point but within few seconds the sympathetic systems got activated and it increased the right at uh, the cardiac output but at the cost of an increased right atrial pressure now when the the cardiac output has slightly been increased with sympathetic then the then the chronic effects will occur after some time and what happens is because the, the the cardiac output is low the cardiac output is low so the blood flow to the kidneys the blood flow to the kidneys will be low so kidneys will not be receiving enough enough blood and they will not be forming forming enough urine due to in decreased formation of urine there will be fluid retention the volume of blood in the system will start increasing and more fluid will start returning to the heart to the right atrium it will increase the right atrial pressure because more fluid is coming although the cardiac output is low because the heart is weak it is unable to pump but it is important to remind that the damage is moderate or the damage is small so with the this with the help of sympathetic system activation and with the help of fluid retention the cardiac output will e increase even more the cardiac output will increase even more from this level to this level and on top of that there will be recovery recovery will occur in this damage area this damage area will recover from the acute damage and it will uh, it will regain its blood supply and the remaining portion of the heart will increase in size and the heart will recover from the damage these changes the acute changes and the chronic changes with sympathetic system activation with fluid fluid retention and with recovery with help will help to increase the cardiac output to increase the cardiac output again to the normal level so the cardiac output initially decreased then it slightly increased with sympathetic system and then increased to the normal level with the at the level of partial recover partial recover level or the partially recovered level and at this level the cardiac output is exactly normal the cardiac output is 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 exactly normal although the 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 normal heart can beat even more than recovered heart the normal heart can pump even more blood you can see the graph for the recovered the recovered the recovered heart is below the normal but the cardiac output for the normal function has been restored with the help of sympathetic system activation and with the help of fluid retention and with the help of recovery of the damage when the cardiac output has reached to this normal level this is labeled as compensated heart failure this is labeled as compensated heart failure compensated heart failure now if the heart damage is very much high or there is a severe damage a large portion of the heart has been damaged due to obstruction of a big vessel in this condition the heart will not be able to regain its normal cardiac output level the heart will not be able to regain its normal cardiac output level and that form of cardiac failure will be labeled as decompensated heart failure so after the damage if the heart is able to increase its cardiac output back to the normal level it is labeled as compensated heart failure and if it is unable to bring back the cardiac output to the normal level despite of compensation by the sympathetic system and despite of fluid retention despite of recovery then this will be labeled as decompensated heart failure now we look at the graph for 
the decompensated heart failure and we see that initially that initially the this is the normal functioning level of the heart as soon as the damage occurs as the soon as the damage occurs the cardiac output falls to this level the cardiac output falls to this level but remember that the damage this time is very much large or very big damage has occurred severe damage has occurred so the chances of recovery are very much low now the same compensations systems will get activated at this at this level at this level the cardiac the right atrial pressure was zero the right atrial pressure was zero and the cardiac output was 5 liters per minute but as soon as the damage has occurred the cardiac output has fallen to this level the cardiac output has fallen to this level from this level to this lower level and the right atrial pressure has increased a little bit now what will happen the same sympathetic system will get activated the sympathetic system will increase the heart rate it will try to increase the force of contraction of the heart and it will try to bring more blood to the heart and due to this sympathetic activation due to compensation by the sympathetic system now the the graph is the same but presentation for the severe damage is a little bit different so acutely the cardiac output has decreased and now the sympathetic system has been activated which will try to increase the cardiac output from this level from this level to this new level so now with the help of sympathetic system activation the cardiac output has slightly increased to this level but it is still lower than the normal now what will happen in the chronic effects the fluid retention will start fluid retention will start and the kidneys the kidneys cardiac out, due to low cardiac output due to low arterial pressure due to low renal blood flow the the kidneys will start retaining the fluid and the, the urine formation will decrease so due to fluid retention the cardiac output will increase even more it will increase even more and due to more fluid returning to the right atrium the right atrial pressure will also start increasing and it will increase to this level it will increase to this level but the recovery of the heart the damage the recovery of the damaged heart will not be as much as it was in the small damage so even with the help of sympathetic system activation and even with the help of fluid retention the cardiac output has increased and it has increased the right atrial pressure but it is still below the normal level it is still below the normal level so when it is below the normal level the kidneys keep on retaining the fluid the kidneys keep on retaining the fluid in the compensated heart failure when this level is reached when this level is reached and the cardiac output has touched this normal level the cardiac output has touched this normal level the kidneys start increasing the urine formation kidneys start increasing the urine formation and there is no more fluid retention but in decompensated heart failure because the cardiac output is not touching the normal level it is not touching this level and it is it is remaining below this normal level so the kidneys keep on retaining more and more fluid and the urine formation is decreasing more and more which leads to increase in the right atrial pressure but the cardiac output is not increasing and the cardiac output reaches this level now the kidneys keep on retaining more and more fluid more and more fluid and the right atrial pressure increase even more and it reaches this level it reaches this level and now the cardiac output has started decreasing it has started decreasing because when more and more fluid is coming back to the heart and the heart is very much damaged a lot of a big portion of the heart has been damaged so already the heart is damaged and more fluid is returning to the heart because of increased fluid retention the heart starts stretching and it is unable to pump properly so the heart is weak it has been damaged and on top of that there is a lot of fluid retention so the the cardiac output start decreasing even further 
Now at this level, the fluid retention will not lead to recovery. But at this point, at this point, the fluid retention will start deteriorating or decreasing the cardiac output or the cardiac function even further. And now the cardiac output will start decreasing even more. So rather than compensating and rather than recovering, the cardiac output has started decreasing even more and the, due to increased fluid retention, due to increased fluid retention, due to increased filling pressure and the right atrial pressure will increase even more. Now when the right atrial pressure has reached this level, the pressure at the right atrium is has increased so much that it has stretched the heart so much that it is unable to pump, the cardiac output will decrease to this level. The cardiac output will decrease to this level and then the, the cardiac, when the cardiac output decreases, the, the blood flow to the kidneys will decrease even more and the urine formation will decrease more and more and the patient may even die at this condition. When cardiac output reaches this level and the right atrial pressure reaches this level and the patient is not treated, if in time treatment is not provided at this level, the patient may die. And this condition in which the kidneys are not, the kidneys cannot receive enough blood to generate enough amount of urine, this is labeled as decompensated heart failure. In compensated heart failure, after the fall in cardiac output, the sympathetics and the fluid retention were able to bring back the cardiac output to the, to the normal level because the damage was very much small. But in the decompensated heart failure, in the decompensated heart failure, despite of the sympathetic system activation and despite of the fluid retention, the cardiac output initially increased but because the damage was so much big that it could the heart could not recover so it increased the fluid volume so much that it deteriorated and it started decreasing the cardiac output and increasing the right atrial pressure and it, it reached a level where death of the patient occur and the heart could not recover and the systems these uh, compensatory systems could not compensate for the cardiac failure and it is labeled as decompensated heart failure so that's all about the decompensated heart failure compensated heart failure acute effects of cardiac failure and chronic effects of heart failure thanks a lot for watching the video